pumping this guy up. Let's see what it looks like. Look at that. Oh yeah. This thing's vibrating to all hell. Really bad. This is their bar unit. Holy crap. That's not good. You got something stuck in that blower wheel, man. Whew. This video is brought to you by Sporlin. Quality, integrity, and tradition. Got our work cut out for us today. We've got a big uh, blower assembly replacement on a double shafted blower. I'll show you once we get up there. All right, this is my unit, and uh, look at what's fallen out of the blower assembly right now. This thing is so caked with dirt that it's vibrating everywhere. Just from spinning it, watch this. Let's go the opposite direction. That's crazy how much stuff is coming out of there. So, no wonder if this thing's vibrating. So, what we quoted, I had another tech here, was we just quoted a complete rebuild. Two new blower wheels, new shaft, new pulleys. Adjustable motor pulley. So, uh, the process here, I've done these before. We're gonna slide this out, set it on the ground. I'll start cutting everything up and we'll get going on everything. This is crazy. These things are just caked with stuff. Bad, and it's, it's the worst over on this one. Right here. Yeah, this stuff is just chunking out of there. No wonder this thing was uh, vibrating like crazy. All right, uh, my first step here is to verify that the blower wheels that I brought up here are correct. So we'll make sure that everything is right. Once I know it's all right, then we'll start cutting and unbolting. I got the question recently, why don't I just clean up the shaft and make everything work? And it, it all has to do with time and money. It's much faster and much cheaper just to chop these things off and replace the wheels. You'll spend a lot of time, I mean, I've done it, but you'll spend a lot of time trying to change bearings and you know, get all that stuff out. But you gotta figure this stuff's all rusted and nasty. So much easier and faster just to chop it off. The blower wheels are correct. Uh, the bearings are correct. Locking collar bearings. And the shaft, we've got a double-sided shaft right here, is correct. So everything's good. So once I've done that, then I can get to butchering and I'll just start chopping stuff off and make it so much easier, so. You really wanna use these easy ups to your advantage. So the sun's behind me, so put it back there and tilt it down. Um, what I ended up doing was cutting off the inside of the shaft and I had to go at it from an angle. I ended up using my grinder. But the first one I did it real quick and uh, you know, I'm, I'm guilty of doing things because I just wanna get it done and not paying attention to myself, okay? So I get done with that one and it's loose, it's all good. And my ears are killing me right now, okay? So I talk about not wearing headphones on the roof when you're working, except for when you need it for hearing protection, guys. I've got some earbuds right here. I'm gonna go ahead and put those on because I still got three more cuts to make. So gotta protect your ears big time. So yeah, I'm gonna use those earbuds now. All right, got everything cut. So they're all broken free so I can unbolt everything. Uh, we're just gonna flip the blower assembly over. What I did to cut this out was I used my angle grinder and I made side cuts. So that way I could still hopefully keep it within the blower wheel because the cuts need to be so that way you can still drop it out the bottom of the blower assembly. So yeah, just two cuts, one that way, flipped it over, one that way until they met. Just like that. But again, you gotta make sure that everything is the right stuff before you do that. But all right, we're gonna flip this guy over. Um, what actually happened, this is how stuff goes down. I actually quoted this for two people and I brought another tech with me and when we arrived, the manager was just about to put in a work order for their walk-in cooler. It's completely iced up on both evaporators. So I used my other tech to help me get the assembly out and then I'm riding solo while I have him de-icing the evaporator coils. We're gonna get that up and running. I'll probably have to come back to troubleshoot why it was iced up, but we'll at least get it defrosted so that way the walk-in cooler goes down to temp. But gotta get this done too, so it's how it works. Carefully taking everything apart, baby steps, pulled the whole blower assembly apart as one complete unit. Remove these guys and the wheels will slide out, slide the new ones in. Pay attention, make sure the wheels go back in in the right direction. There's nothing worse than spending two and a half, three hours getting this all together and realize you put it together backwards, so. I haven't put the shaft in yet, but I got the wheels in. I'm slowly reassembling the blower assembly. A couple tips here. Number one, nothing is going back in its exact places. Like everything's a little bit tweaked here and there. 
Therefore, I'm definitely gonna have to adjust the motor bracket. So keep that in mind. Don't just put it on, set it, and forget it. The next thing is as I'm tightening things on, you don't tighten screws down. You just keep them loose. Um, I am using an impact, but I've got trigger control, okay? So we're leaving everything loose. We're just threading the screws in. And then once we get everything threaded, then we'll torque down on everything. But you gotta be cautious, because if you just drive this one in, then nothing else is gonna line up anywhere. So just a little bit at a time, assembling it slowly. Aligning everything works best with two people, but when you don't got two people, you just gotta take it slow, nice and easy. And remember not to forget things, such as putting the locking collar race on because had I done the bearing without the locking collar race, I would have had to take everything off. Um, we are slowly getting there. What I did was I lined up the bearings via the dirt line, tighten those down. Everything's still loose as far as the wheels go. I gotta take the old ones, I gotta get the keys out of the old ones because I don't have new keys, you see those? I gotta slide those out so that way I can put them in there and then set the wheels. Um, yeah. And we're getting there and you have a little bit of play i mean of course you want it to be as straight as possible that's why i tried to use the existing marks for the bearings but these bearings they will self-center ever so slightly we don't have a lot of play there but this whole bearing assembly right here will pivot within that bearing just enough that like if you don't have it lined up perfect like it'll kind of self-center but you'll know when you start it up if things don't match up then you might have to move things around little trick these are the keys i got them out what you do is put two fingers on each side of this guy like this and then with your other hand run this back and forth and you'll clean these things up super clean so I clean all edges and then I'll just rub that real quick where that little dimple is and then they'll slide right in everything's in the wheels are centered they spin no scariness um, I'm gonna do a double check on tightening everything down and then I'm gonna get my uh, the other guy that's here working while he's de-icing that coil, I'm gonna have him stop and come help me slide this blower assembly in. Once we get it in, then we'll start lining up the pulleys and all that good stuff. I used to get this wrong all the time and I have since been corrected. I will say that I never had a failure, but this is a locking collar bearing, okay? What happens is if you pull the bearing apart, the this piece fits over a race and it's not perfectly round, it's oblong. So when you put this on here and you twist it as you turn it in a certain direction you'll notice that it starts to get tight on the bearing race what you do to tighten this down um, this set screws loose okay is you spin it the direction of the rotation okay I always used to spin it the opposite direction so this guy rotates in this direction therefore the locking collar gets turned until it gets tight snug and then you tighten down the set screw so again to, to repeat that to tighten down the locking collar, you go the direction of the rotation. Once it gets snug, you tighten it down and that locks the bearing in place. Um, I used to get that wrong, but again, you know, um, I never read the instructions <laughs> and it's funny. And someone said something to me and then I opened up the instructions and it was like, oh yeah, stupid. No duh, just turn it that way. But um, okay, we're good to go. I'm gonna get my guy up here to help me out. Boy, I'm out of breath trying to lift this. It was a pain in the butt. Obviously had to help her, but you can see I put the anti seize stuff on there just to protect the shaft is really all that it's doing. I tried to make it even. So once I goobered it on there, I just took a towel and gave it a quick wipe down all the way down. So we got this guy in. There's no rush because they don't have customers in the building. So we're actually going to take a lunch. Uh, he's almost done. He's got one evaporator defrosted. So we're going to take a lunch and then uh, I'll finish this guy up. Repositioned a few things, put the canopy over where I'm at now. All right, they have this pulley on backwards and I can't get the key way out or the key. So we're having to pull it off with the key in hopes that it doesn't fall off right now. Pull. Let's go if I can get it off now. I might have to reposition because I bottomed out on my tool, but um, I can always reposition the, lay the arms. But I might be able to get it now. Penetrating oil. Okay, got it kind of lined up, eyeballed it, make sure everything's good. I'm gonna tighten the pulleys down. 
need to look at this guy and make sure that the key is actually going all the way underneath the set screw. We are kind of moved off the... And it's not, so I need to hit the key in. tool has a hammer end, right? So now, it might be impossible for you guys to see, but I'm getting down here and I'm making sure that that's the key right there. So it pushed all the way in through there and I'm making sure that the set screw is actually pushing down on the key and it is. So we're good there. Now I just need to line it up right here it's off because i ended up moving that pulley out so everything's kind of cattywampus so i'm going to straighten it out again so when you're tightening down set screws on a key i go tight loose tight loose tight and every time you'll notice it goes a little bit tighter and what you're actually doing is scoring the surface that you're screwing it into here's a little trick so these had zip ties you can see them right here and the zip ties i had to cut them but if you don't cut the bottom part, you can pass a new zip tie through it like that. And then that's still secured to the panel and then you got a spot to still zip tie your wires to. That's where my wires are gonna go. All right, we're getting ready to start this guy up. I've got a tech downstairs watching the, the area that this feeds because I don't want it to fire right up and I wanna test phase rotation. Put the unit in unit test so it shouldn't fire up. Turn this bad boy on. Test voltage real quick. See, we got full calls, so see it would have turned right on. But it should start up in a test mode. Say CO1, perfect. So, 206 volts, 206 volts, 206 volts. I'm gonna put on phase rotation. We're gonna go Line one to line two, wait for it to say line three, move that guy over, move that guy there. Line one, two, three. So my phase rotation is correct. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bump this guy real quick. Just make sure that it's going in the right direction. Come on over here. Might have already stopped. Let's see if it's still rotating. Nah, we're gonna have to hit it again. Didn't bump it for very long. Okay, that should still be rotating now. Yep, we're going in the right direction. Okay, we're good. And uh, I believe the evaporator motor, 10.6, that's not right. Let me check the, um, the current draw that we're allowed to run real quick. The indoor blower motor says 8.8 .8 amps. We're gonna fire this guy up. And hopefully it doesn't vibrate all over the place. So I'm gonna bump it again. Nice and smooth, it's not vibrating at all, okay? Um, I should probably turn this on current. And let me turn this on. And looks like we're over-amping a little bit. So I need to go ahead and adjust the motor pulley a wee bit. Slow it down. But it's okay, I'm just blowing all the potential dust out of the way. And then I'll try to adjust the motor pulley and then slow it down a little bit. All right, I opened the pulley one full rotation and let's see where we're at now. There we go, perfect. It's at about 8.3, 8.4. We're allowed to run 8.8. .8. I'm gonna leave it there so long as the unit's airflow checks out good. Um, we're gonna go ahead and take the unit out of test mode, let it fire up. The vibration is completely gone. So I'll show that to you guys when it fires up. I just went ahead and put it in test mode so that way I can get all stages to fire. So I went to C11, fired it up. Condenser fan motors are running. Those two aren't over there. I'm gonna check those in a minute, but they might phase on or turn on via um, 
Yeah, see we're going good. 8.5, 8.6, so we're cool on that. We're gonna let it run for a while. And then let me uh, show you guys inside here. Nice and mellow. No problems, no vibration. Nice and good. So all this stuff is what was caked on the blower wheels and there's still more. I already took the blower wheels down. There's still more on the blower wheels. They were just caked with crap. All right, this is the return for that AC. And uh, the return air grill wasn't too dirty, but look at the turning vanes. The turning vanes are plugged. So we're cleaning them out right now. It's insane, because I noticed that there was like some airflow issues with it. See all this stuff's coming down from it. It's pretty nasty. So this one was actually a, a call uh, maybe like two, three months ago. I was working on a kitchen AC and I noticed that there was water leaking everywhere and uh, that unit was vibrating. So uh, I had brought it to the customer's attention. It was right at the beginning of the first COVID lockdown. Um, they really didn't want to do anything about it. They let it be. Um, but then we had someone else go out there a while later, about three, four weeks ago, and uh, to solve all the water leaking issues and all that. And he said that the vibrating got so bad that he didn't feel comfortable leaving the unit running, so he shut it down. Then the customer approved everything, and I went in and went ahead and rebuilt that blower assembly. It's really not that difficult to rebuild those. It's just time consuming, and then you just got to kind of pay attention to everything, how you take it apart, making sure you get it all put back together right, you know, just like you guys saw. Um, you know, evaluating everything, just little things like I, you know, when, when I started it back up, I noticed that when I would open the filter door, it was extremely difficult to open the filter door and then it would slam shut. And I was like, okay, so just knowing these systems, I knew that we had a return air restriction somewhere. Okay. Um, I had another service technician again, that was de-ice in the walk-in cooler. Uh, when he finished with that, I had him go down and look at that return air grill. And he said the return air grill was clean. So I went down there and looked at it and I go, yeah, but something's not right. So we dropped the return air grill to see what was up. And we noticed the turning vanes on top of it were completely restricted. And he said, basically, when he started to scrape the lint off, it was all falling on the ground. But by the time he got most of it off, it he couldn't get it to fall on the ground anymore. It was actually sucking up into the return, okay? So that just shows you the air restriction that was there before he cleaned it. Now, uh, my concern though, is if they put a turning vein right there, more than likely they put turning veins elsewhere in the system too, and are those plugged up too? That's another thing. And this is the kind of stuff that happens when we don't do you know, normal routine maintenance and or when the customers just take a brush and brush the return occasionally, then just let the stuff suck up while it gets stuck in the turning veins further down in the ductwork. Okay, now most systems probably don't have turning veins. It's very rare that you actually see um, a sheet metal duct system in you know most of the restaurants that actually have legit turning veins in them. If you guys don't already know, those turning veins are simply there to reduce um, uh, restrictions and to help the airflow more evenly because uh, I'm not the super smartest person, but they've, they've got some, uh, some slides that show how air flows when you hit like a 90. So if you have a 90 in a square duct that's metal, sheet metal, it, there's actually a lot of turbulence right there. So the turning vanes actually help to make the air smo uh, to flow smoothly, basically, so there's not as much turbulence. But when the systems aren't properly maintained, you see that that turning vein was completely, you know, just plugged up with crap. So, you know, they can lead to more problems down the line if the system's not maintained and cleaned properly. So that's why it's important, too, that we educate our customers on cleaning return air grills like, you know, that one hinges down. So it's really easy. You hinge it down and then you wipe it down. But if customers are going in there and wiping that thing down on a weekly basis with it in the up position, then that stuff is just getting sucked up into the duct work and plugging up the turning veins. And that's pretty much what's happening here. You know, um, the customers don't understand. It's not, I wouldn't say it's their fault. I mean, they're just not educated technicians essentially. Okay. But keep that in mind too, when we're doing preventative maintenance and things like that, you don't want to just go brushing return grills because where's that dirt and lint going to go? What kind of repercussions is there going to be? It's going to fill up the ductwork essentially. So Anyways, um, everything else on this unit was uh, was not really a big problem. I was super satisfied with the vibration. It was completely eliminated, so that was good. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. I really, really appreciate you guys taking the time. I say this every video, but I truly do, guys. It's very humbling to see the views and the 
the response and the comments. It blows my mind that you guys just want to hear me ramble about random stuff. Eh, it is, you know, it's, it's interesting. Um, uh, hats are available again on the website, hvacrvideos.com. I've got small and uh, large hats available again. Uh, lots of shirts still available. So if you guys are interested, you can support the channel by doing so. Also, if you guys are considering any tool purchases, go to truetechtools.com. Uh, use my offer code big picture. Um, and it really actually does help me when you guys click the affiliate links for the tools too. So if you guys are interested in a tool that I use in my video, do me a favor, go to the show notes. There should be an affiliate link for it. If you click the affiliate link and you use my offer code, it actually helps me greatly. Okay. Both of those help to support the channel. So if you guys are considering any tool purchases, please do so. Um, if you guys need any offer codes for, I'm sorry, any tool links or anything for something you don't see, do me a favor, just shoot me an email or a message or whatever, and I'll generate one for you. And it really does help to support the channel. Okay. Um, we will catch you guys Monday evenings, 5 PM Pacific on, uh, YouTube when I go live to do my, uh, you know, weekly live stream. And then also on the HVAC overtime show on Friday evenings around 6 ish PM when I go live with all my buddies. So really, really appreciate you guys. And we will catch you on the next one.